So in this video, uh, I want to talk about um, making a physics-based platformer. And uh, we're going to give it a little bit of a narrative in terms of a cutscene at the beginning and maybe some cutscenes in between depending on what happens between this dog and this cat. This cat, I'll uh, give credit in the um, uh, description. And same with the dog. The dog comes from Sketchfab. I want to talk about getting that into the scene because I got it from Sketchfab here, this Dream Noms. Um, uh, go there, download, give them a like, uh, follow if you want. Um, basically this dog has some animation, it's low poly, I like it a lot. It was done in Blender and in order to get it to work you'll need to um, download and you don't want to get the GLTF format because um, even though that may work with some plugin for Unity, uh, you're going to want the original blend file. So download that. And when you get that, you can open it in Blender. And it'll look like this. So you've got the, all these animations embedded in the uh, character. Um, because this uses this quadruped rigify rig, um, you're going to want, it's going to end up being generic character. Same thing with the cat. Um, and it won't work for certain types of uh, setups and making ragdolls or whatever. For physics out of it, it might be a little more difficult because of the way the bones connect. So what you want to do is select, um, select the hierarchy for the meta rig. And then File, Export, FBX, Selected Objects. And then you're going to want to, for the armature, only the deformed bones right here. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to add the leaf bones. These will just add bones to the end um, to keep it clean. You may not want that, so you can just do leaving the leaf bones off and then bake the animation key all bones and then export that to your unity project folder once you get that then you should see I'll close this in unity this character it'll be set up for generic rig leave it that and it'll have these animations uh, embedded in the character. If you want, those animations won't uh, loop by default, so you'll need to select the character in your project. You'll see the animations, just select one of them, hit edit, and then go through, take a look at them, and see which ones you want to set to loop down here on the bottom. So like the walk cycle, you'll tag, you'll uh, toggle that uh, checkbox and then hit apply and the same with the one that I'm interested in this idle lie down it's got the checkbox and then once you have that you can put it in a timeline and it will loop so we'll play with that in a little bit um, and then we have our cat character um, so we need to set our cat character up with a um, third person uh, collidable rig I'm using uh, the 3D game kit just because uh, this is part of a tutorial project that I've worked on and I already had that installed for other things but I did use Pro Builder to model this set you can tell from the uh, textures and, um, and then some of this stuff is just models from other sets um, so Pro Builder uh, I've used right here uh, to model. I've got tutorials on that. Um, I'm not really using anything else from the 3D game kit. That's why this scene looks very different than the standard 3D game kit scene. Uh, but I am using the standard assets um, third person setup. So under characters, third person, and I'll link to this stuff. I've got a GitHub. <coughs> the standard assets aren't uh, They've been deprecated on the asset store, but I've made a backup on GitHub so I can still use these for tutorials. 
and it's a pretty good uh, it's a nice default kind of super generic third person rig you can find others I'm sure on the store you can probably find a pretty good quadruped rig on the store I don't know if it'd work for a cat but um, this we're gonna just leave the cat unanimated since we don't have any animations for him but we will use this prefab third person character set up just to kind of allow us to drive him around the scene so you can tell there's a bit of a scale issue with the way I've modeled this it won't matter too much if you have it if your scene is way too big for this character then physics will be off somewhat uh, at the scale that this is at they won't be off that much and I'm not using precise physics anyway because um, I kind of want this cat to cause chaos when it's running around the scene so we'll copy the rigid body and just paste it as new on the cat then we'll copy the capsule collider same thing and then we can shorten that probably make it a little bit uh, smaller on the radius and then shift it down and maybe forward a little bit Let's maybe go a little bit lower to the feet more all right that'll work so there's our collider um, and then we can copy the control scripts copy the third person user control and base component is new make sure uh, we'll leave it set for now but this ground check distance isn't going to work um, because it's too small um, even for this small character you probably won't notice it because he's not going to animate but um, it may cause some issues with the way the control works so we're going to leave it for that and then I'll show you how to fix it if it does cause some, cause some movement issues we can delete this guy and we want to choose our third person animator controller for the controller even though there's no animations driven by the state machine it will have some um, variables set up so now he drops we can move him around but I can't push him forward because he's like I said he's falling um, you don't see it you don't see the indication that he's falling because uh, there's no animation for falling for this character but if there were you would see it look like he was falling um, you do want to change this ground check distance to 3.3 .3. so now he'll be able to move so now we can move him around the scene so now he's gone off camera because I don't have a camera that follows him let's put a third person character camera on him using Cinemachine so we'll add Cinemachine see him free look we're going to create a free look camera um, we'll call this cat cam cm cat cam we will target gg you should see a circle appear around the cat now um, we'll fix the heights and stuff and then uh, we could look at gg so if we do, 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 do now the camera's looking let's just take a look at that so now when we uh, start the scene the camera will if you go if you move the mouse low notice that we're looking at um, kind of the torso not the head and the height goes really high off of it sort of creates this orbit around the cat so like we're looking at its feet which is where the um, trans uh, the GG transform is 
So we want to fix that. Instead of looking at that, we may want to, instead of looking at the object itself, we may want to move where we look or shift it so we can get some better composition for the uh, third person control, depending on, we don't know what that'll be yet, but we may want that. So what we can do is we'll add a game object, create an empty, call this GG cam target. And all that's going to be is a empty null that we can parent under her. We're just going to put a little bit out in front of her. We'll just put it on her nose for now. And then shift that under her. So now this CM free look thought we renamed that. Let's see if we can do that again. All right, so there's that, and we will target GG cam targets. Now, what we can do to adjust the um, orbit right here in the orbits is if we go to the bottom one, we can shift it down to the ground more. This middle can come down a little bit lower. And the question is, is it the right? Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then the height can also come down. I don't know if you can see, but I'm moving these orbits around, and we may want the height to be a little bit wider. So you get this sort of all over the um, kind of a tornado looking swirl around it. Let's see what that looks like. So now, when we're low, we look at the cat's head or its nose, which is inside out, I'm noticing now. And then when we go up high, we're kind of orbiting around. So that looks pretty good. Uh, so now if we drive around, whoops, cat doesn't collide with anything because she's in the default layer. And as I was saying, we're using the 3D game kit and all of this, um, all the collision on this environment stuff, I've set up some... In I've put them in different layers, and in order for this cat, the player, to, she's in the default, GG, she's in the default. In order for her to collide, we have to know what we're trying to collide with. So if we go to project settings, we can put her in player, which would be here, and that's the one that collides with a lot. But we want to make sure that anything that we want her to collide with needs to be put in the things that she's set up to collide with here. So there's environments, vehicles. I've added this furniture layer. Um, so the player is the one to put her in. So if we put her in player, say yes to all the children. Now she gets the floor she'll collide with it so the idea then now this camera is going to go it can go anywhere so it's orbiting through the um, walls and this is tricky because um, when she's colliding with the wall and if I'm I can put a collider on the camera if she's colliding with the wall it'll still sort of pass through if I put a collider on the camera um, so what I want to do is there's a Cinemachine volume uh, that we can put, um, but it's tricky because it wants to use a collision mesh and it'll constrain it to a volume. And depending on what you're trying to constrain it to, um, you may not have the collision mesh to constrain it to. I'll show you what I mean. So because I don't want this camera to pass outside of these walls and show like all the different messy things that I had to do to get the light baked and all this. Um, but I do want to make it so that it sort of like follows the wall as it moves around. 
and keeps tracking her, which these are more than capable of doing. Um, if I go down to, let's go to our, close this physics stuff. Here's our cat cam. If I go to the bottom of that, there's this add uh, extensions for the Cinemachine. If I add a collider, let me just show you what that does. And I say collide against, and this, let's just say um, colliders, because that's colliders collide against just about everything. Um, that will put a round collider on the camera that, when it gets to there, will try to solve. Um, if you put this avoid obstacles on, we'll try to solve and keep the camera inside. It'll it'll collide against it. However, like I said, because she's colliding with everything and everything's got physics, it will still pass through the wall. But if I go here, well, it's not colliding now. I think it might be because our camera is also on default. We may want that on player as well. so that the collisions will work. And let me double check and make sure. Yeah, it's set to collide. We'll also do environment. And leave this stuff. It's caused a problem where something fell backwards. But you can see now that the camera will uh, adjust against the wall to a point. As long as she's not colliding with the wall, it'll slide along like that. But as soon as she collides with it, then we still go through. So collision with collision is problematic. So we can lose that. Um, remove that component. Instead, we want to use a volume Cinemachine confiner right here. And then if you look at that, it's going to want a bounding shape. And then you're going to confine it in 3D. And you need a bounding volume. And you can set some dampening. So all we need to do to make that work is create a game object, a box. Um, it's possible that you might be able to do a mesh collider if you had a multi... Um, well, let's go ahead and just try that. I'm going to go... We'll see how this works. In general, concave meshes are problematic for physics. They won't work great. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So let's do Pro Builder. I'm going to go New Shape, Cube, that's fine, and Build. And that'll just make a Pro Builder. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I need the Pro Builder window still. Tools, Pro Builder. We will put that down here. Um, mainly because, so it's made this cube, right? That cube has a mesh collider. You can set it to convex, which if the, which if the cube is, um, uh, concave or convex then it'll work and even if it isn't it'll still draw try to draw a convex mesh around it but what we're going to try to do is make it the bounds of this room in the hall so I'm taking it to here and I'm just using the, the pro builder tools where I'm selecting these faces and dragging them so I'm going to put it there and then pull this to roughly the roof. Now to make it easier to see what I'm doing, I can um, select all the faces and just flip the normals right here, flip face normal, so they're all facing inwards and I can select them from the inside that way. Makes it a little easier to edit. So I don't need the camera to be able to go below the floor, but I'm going to pull it a little bit below anyway, because it probably won't because of the um, rig constraint that we have on it. I forgot to flip that face. So we get the camera this way so that it's constrained 
it'll be within this box. And this is similar to what you would do with just a normal cube, but now we want to see if we can make it a concave mesh. We're going to insert an edge loop so we can pull this hallway out. Like there. And take this face. If you hold down shift, then you can extrude that. So now we have this shape. And then maybe we want to create one that goes to the outside or um, outside of this um, box. So what can we do? We want to probably insert two lines, two edges. So we'll select by edge and I'm just going to select this edge. Um, insert edge loop which is right where I wanted it to be and then this one insert edge loop and I'll just pull that over to here or actually here so it'll let the camera go through actually we don't care if the camera passes through here because of the um, the wall the glass it's okay for it to go through glass since you'll be able to see through it anyway. All right, so then we can pull one more uh, confining box. Mm, let me insert one here. This is really going to be a test. Which I'm almost certain will fail, but nothing ventured nothing gained all right so let's take this and we'll just extrude that out so that the cat can or the camera and the cat can both go through this part as well all right so now we've got this shape <clears throat> it's going to have a mesh collider we're going to call this our uh, instead of cube we'll call it camera confine and there's our mesh collider that's all good. We'll make it. Doesn't really need a physics material. Okay, so we can hide our mesh render. There is our camera mesh or our uh, physics mesh now that we see that green, those green lines. Um, what we want to do is go back to our where was it? Cat cam. And now with this confined 3D, select. Our camera can find. See how it turned yellow there? And it's going to use that mesh collide. Hopefully that'll work. Let's find out. So we go here. Cat works good. Uh, if we collide with the wall, yeah, it's not. So that. Um, collision. Now it may be that it's because we need we might need to turn on con I don't know if convex will even work on that object because if we do camera confine and we turn on this convex mesh you see how it kind of sort of works but it creates that um, extra hole here but it will problem is, is it's, then you'll be able to go the camera will go through this wall but we'll see so with that convex um, yeah see it pushed out it works now but because that collision was there it also f messed with our physics uh, oh, well, it's on the wrong layer, no wonder. Uh, let's, the reason that it's interacting, it's default, it's set for default. We can put it in camera collider, which if we look um, at the project settings, camera collider here only collides, this is the way I've set it up, only collides with camera collider. So it'll only collide with another camera collider. And then if we put our cat cam, instead of in player we can put it in camera collider 
And theoretically, it should work. We'll see. So it doesn't push the objects. Well, I did something to the uh, TV, but we collide, and the camera collides now. So it's working, at least as far as the... Uh, So that works really well, actually. If we go here, cat collides, but the camera will go through because of that convex shape. Um, still, it's better than nothing, I guess. Now, why did it shoot the TV out? The TV is probably set up for physics. And it is on a furniture layer. It's got a mesh collider. And it's convex. Hmm. This is where the physics gets a little tricky. Um, let's see if we can make this work camera can find without the convex so it'll be interior um, I'm thinking that it just won't work on a concave so that collides yeah this goes through so you gotta have for that confiner to work it's got to be a concave um, outward facing mesh it's doing some sort of ray casting from the outside I'm guessing then, if you do that, like I said, it will cause this issue where you get the, um, this wall isn't going to work. Um, and there's no way to add to that. So you kind of need for that camera confiner to work. It's got to be kind of a volume, uh, a boxy volume for that. This would, I mean, it'll do an odd shape, but... If you're going to do this, you might as well just um, insert a box, right? Um, and then do some sort of handoff between cameras. When the character gets here, you can swap to a different controller or something using a, an activation, deactivation script. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll leave that. Since the collision works, we have to figure out why it's throwing the TV out. I'm just going to see if it does. Yeah, so the TV is disappearing because something about that volume doesn't want to be, it collides with it. So camera collider, I didn't think camera collider would collide with furniture. Hmm. Maybe we can put these on some other layer. Let's try camera confine and we can put it on post processing maybe. And then the same with uh, cat cam. see now see that did every, that did more so let's go see what post processing collides with collider that's it hmm nothing seems to collide with checkpoints do not draw and eh, let's try putting them on or level perhaps so level with level let's try that uh, cat cam 
Yes. And then camera confine. So now they're both on level. What am I putting on level that's causing it? So this is the camera confine. It's got this mesh collider with convex. There's nothing there. And it's set for level. The cat cam. Uh, must be a box collider, sphere collider, or capsule collider. That's what's causing the problem. So it doesn't work with um, this mesh. So I can get rid of this. Go back and put this on camera collider. That was our cat cam. We can lose this. So it does need a box. Um, so what we'll do is we'll add... And you don't, I mean, I'm being picky. If you don't care, or if you've modeled this, or if you don't care if the camera passes through uh, the walls, then that's fine. It is something you're going to have to solve at some point because you do lose sight of the uh, cat that way. So um, you could also use a um, clear shot camera and just have it hand off between and let that be your collider so that it, the cameras physically can't be outside the walls. But this third person controller works pretty good for the um, collision. So we will use a box. 3D cube. It's gonna have this box collider. Just want to get it to almost the edges. You don't want to go clear to the edges because you kind of want to keep the camera a little bit um, off the wall. that and pull this up. Seems to be pretty good. We turn off the mesh render here so that we just get the box. And this will be camera volume. volume one just in case and make it target that and you can put some dampening on it not much because it'll make it kind of sloppy if you do but that'll help kind of smooth the bumps uh, everything's colliding I forgot to, I've got to put it on a layer where it doesn't because it is a physics volume um, because it's turned on, it will cause everything to shoot out from it. So you need to put it somewhere with something that doesn't collide with it. Camera collider shouldn't collide with anything except for the camera. So there, everything is in place. I don't know why my TV is flying. But we'll fix that. Alright, so now he's colliding and it's colliding. So I, I get close. So yeah, it's, and you just have to change the volume, see where the camera can clip. You just have to change the uh, volume to pull it in a little bit. So take that and scale it. Keep it further out. 
notice I've got it going through the floor because I don't care. Let's change this. I'm thinking that it might be this. Um, let's just turn that off for now. Well, actually, we'll add a. Um, let's make it convex, and we will put it in environments. These guys are colliders. They should collide. Let's see. Yeah, okay, now it's in place. Let's just jump the cat over there. So the cat collides with it and can knock it around. Does it? Oh, it collides through the environment. So we need, or the collider. We need to fix that. But the camera is fixed, so now the camera can't go outside the wall, even though the cat's colliding with it. So that'll allow us to do walking along the wall. So when it gets under, you get a little bit of gimbal lock on that, which is not great, but so it keeps you in this area. But if the cat goes out, the camera can stay there and the cat can escape. You can have a collision on there. So that's how that would work. The cat can still go down the hall too. The camera will stay here and watch it go down there. All right, so then, yeah. Everything else is okay for the camera to pass through. Let's fix the TV one more time and set it back to furniture, I guess, or collider. Okay, that works. All right, so now you see we've got all this stuff with physics on it, these pillows. Um, if I jump, see how it kind of bounces? But then if I jump over on one of these things, he won't bounce. There's, it's called a physics material. So that where you put this rigid body on an object here, you can um, give it a physics material, or sorry, the, on the collider itself, because you can have multiple physics materials depending on the box collider. So like this thing, its box colliders are all wood, which has, if you select, let me go to, if you select that, you'll see its physics material. When you bring it up here, you see it's got a dynamic friction of 0.45, static friction, no bounciness. And it has that kind of way that it averages stuff. Whereas this cushion box collider has a cushion that I made this, and it has uh, 0.6 friction and uh, static friction 0.6 but a bounciness of 0.5 that causes the cat to do the bounce all right so let's go and set up this uh, table since it has no colliders on it right now um, I'll show you how it how that should work so we want to um, add a box collider so that we could add a mesh collider. Let's do that first. I just want to show you how that would work. Because you can use them for some things. So you go under physics. Instead of box collider, let's add a mesh collider. Um, it will work for this would make uh, the way it's set up right now, it's an automatic convex or concave shape. Um, and we can put like wood as the physics material on it. If we put that, it won't collide right now. It doesn't have any reason to fall. We can collide with it, but it doesn't have like a physics property. So we need to go to physics and add a rigid body. 
give it a mass. So we'll make this like four for the table. Give it a little bit of drag so it drags across the floor. Make it two. Um, depends on the contact or how you want it to kind of be slowed down based on the weight and the drag. Uh, and then you can leave these for the defaults, but you can play around with interpolate and collision detection, setting it to continuous to get better quality collisions. So let's try that and see if the cat just can collide with the table that way. Oh, so the table I applied, so notice how it fell through the floor. That's the rigid body doing its job, but it's set at default right now, which won't collide with the environment, which is what the the walls and the floor are set at. But also two, yeah, so that's what the walls and floor are set at with this mesh collider. Um, if we set it to like collider, which will collide with the environment and the player. Let's see if it sticks. So it fell through again. Um, however, if we'd make this mesh collider on the table a uh, convex shape, and you can see what happens when we do that is it will um, basically draw a box around the perimeter of the object that's convex, then it should collide so it falls in place. Problem is the cat can't go under the table now. It just pushes this invisible object around in a kind of messy way. Okay, it's efficient from the point of view of the physics. It's four planes or six planes as a collision, but it's not accurate. You want the cat to be able to go under the table. So that's where this mesh collider doesn't really work. So we can lose that. And we'll add a box collider. And then you get this same thing virtually, but even less conforming. But what you can do is you can change the mesh, the uh, bounding box of the box collider. So I'm going to make the top of the uh, table. Pull that up. So that'll be its top. And I'm going to make that have a physics material of ice which should be super slick. So it's like glass. Now we can add another if we copy and paste. Copy that component and paste as new. Then if we go and we edit that collision box, pulling it down to the ground. And making it just fit the leg. we can make its physics be wood. So it's got a little bit more um, drag or uh, and, and it doesn't um, whatever the wood quality is for that physics material. So now we can take that collider, copy the components and paste as new again and then we can take it and just uh, center it, change its center, physically move it, or we can go and edit either way. It's easier to edit, I think. Copy that one. Paste as new. Then edit. And one more time. This is kind of how you can box construct uh, collision meshes on a complex object. Don't go too crazy with it because um, your physics can get a little wild, but th that's why we have just these um, box colliders, and, uh, round colliders. You can add a lot and it'll be fine.
but if you do too many it'll start to bog your machine down depending on your computer's ability. So we don't need to put any, we don't care about collision with these shapes under here. If we did we could just make another box but we don't because all we really need is the legs and the tabletop and that'll give it kind of accurate collision. And we can try that out. So now it fits, it falls. You can walk under the table around it, but if you collide with the leg, which is kind of hard to do, it actually moves. And if we land on the top, he slides across the top pretty well. Okay. Um, so then, With that, let's save. And let me close some of these other windows. I don't need this anymore. Yeah, that's good. So now let's uh, set up this plate, which will sit on top. And we kind of want to make so they can scatter several plates. Um, that doesn't have a uh, collision on it. So let's add. The problem is if we try to add. A box it's not super accurate it'll work but um, and that may be good and good enough but um, it's sort of um, if we hit it at the wrong way it'll look like it's bouncing on the corner if we knock it off the table it'll it'll um, bounce like a box a, a flat box so um, we may not want that we may want to use a mesh collider since we don't have there's no cylinder we have like sphere and capsule which are kind of the cylinder versions but um, they don't they round at the top it's not what we want um, so we may want to use this mesh collider and it won't work as we've seen uh, Concave. If we don't turn on convex, let's just leave this. We'll make it uh, ice as well. Maybe we should make a. Um, let's look at ice's property. So it's dynamic friction, static, and no bounciness. Let's uh, let's make a new one. And this would be under. physics material right here. We'll call this glass. And it'll be like ice, but just a little bit more friction. No bounciness. And we'll do multiply on the uh, that way we'll have the glass physics material set it to glass and we're going to leave it at uh, concave and see what happens we need to put it as a collider let's do furniture we'll make this furniture as well i have um i added the furniture layer if you go to the project's collision settings, you can see where furniture is set to collide with collider, props, enemy, ragdoll, characters, environments, vehicles, and furniture. And we can add player to that. So to find where player's at, it's beyond there. So player will co combine with, uh, yeah, furniture right there. Okay. So um, let's do that and check it out. So the uh, there's no rigid body on the plate. Select that 
add physics rigid body let's give it a mass of one a drag of one and we'll leave that so the plate falls through the floor and that's because um, the mesh collider is not set to con con uh, vex if we set it to convex it will fit the shape you can't make another plate fall into it so if I take this now that it's set and duplicate and put that on top when they fall they kind of they will stack but they don't you can see where they don't they stack uh, they don't fit tight to each other but that's all right I mean that's so if we go and jump you can see where it bounces them and we'll jump on top of it and see if we can scooch them off yeah so the, the reason that he's not gripping the plates more why he kind of slides across them is partly because his weight so if we take and look at the character's rigid body we can make him be like five pounds and give him a little bit more drag Let's see what that does in terms of the force as he moves. So he moves pretty smooth. If we jump, he doesn't jump too high. Actually gives you a little bit more control and now he can kick things around a little bit more. So part of the reason he can move that table easier too. stuff around yeah I kind of like his wrecking ball ability there <laughs> a little bit better with that weight we can tweak it a little bit and make him instead of five make him four or three let's see what that does give him a little bit more jump speed wise too he can move he can get up there he still has some grip still can push things around and we can just change their weights if we don't like the way they respond because right now they're all pretty light all right let's do the same with the chairs uh, we don't want to do it on multiple chairs so we're just going to make it on one so we can uh, let's put it in the furniture layer add a ba uh, box collider and change its make it so it just works uh, let's see we'll make it part of the um, cushion here and that will be our cushion material so he bounces if he's landing on that so you can see where you can fine-tune your collision um, now we can copy that and paste component is new make this um, wood I'm going to make this one of the legs um, And we don't want to block, we want him to be able to go through the legs if he wants to, which is a little bit overkill, but in order to get it, we may want these things, if they got like explosions or something like that, and we knocked them around, we may want them to kind of intermingle where the legs can collide in between each other. So, that's why we do it this way. I'm just going to make them a little bit wider than they actually the legs actually are 
we'll copy that. Paste as new. Change its collision. To there. Probably need to pull both these a little bit lower. And then uh, copy. Pull that to there. This one. Now we've got the legs and the body or the cushion. We want to add one up here and we I'm going to talk about uh, what's going on here in terms of the angle. Um, it's always problematic but why it is the way it is. So let's copy the cushion or the leg. Paste component is new. Edit its collision mesh. So it'd be nice if we could get a rotated box here. Because if you think about it, this thing, these legs, they just are the back kind of is just at an angle. It'd be nice if we could make it this wide and then just sort of rotate the collision. The problem is that will mess with the collision. Um, because of this collision is simplified to be cast out at, um, kind of in a angular direction and if this thing had some rotation on it it messes with the calculations and slows them down so um, what you want to do is kind of do this where you get the top covered and then put some blocking thing here that will uh, be an intermittent thing so that if the cat wants to go through there if a leg wants to penetrate through there that it can so let's fix this one just pull it up more copy that paste as new and Pull this down. So the idea is that you can't really get it to go at an angle, so you sort of just half do it halfway in between. And that the thing that it's colliding with hopefully is wide enough that it won't be able to pass through the difference. Okay? So it's kind of half and half that way. Because it goes this way too. There you go. Then copy that. And edit its collision box to be the other arm. And that's kind of the best you can do. Um, it's not as efficient as we'd like it to be because we ended up having to make um, more collision boxes, but uh, we'll see how that works out. I can also get rid of this Pro Builder now that I know I don't need it. That'll get rid of that interface at the top. So we've got it on the Furniture tab. We have our boxes. We need to add a physics rigid body make this way like three or four and give it a two on the drag we'll see what that does so now we have the cat can go and hit that shift it around 
knock it over. You see where he kind of interacts with it in a way that uh, makes sense. All right, so now we've got that. We can duplicate that chair. Save. Um, CV. Hold down control so that the uh, rotation works. And then CV. So, we've got that placed. Cat can collide with all those objects. Uh, you can collide with the couch, collide with this, collide with the TV. Let's make it, um, I think we've explained the physics part pretty well. So maybe what we wanna do is, um, Let's put a collider on the floor that will activate a timeline that causes the dog to run and chase the cat back. So what you need right now, we're just colliding with um, the um, box, this mesh collider that's part of Pro Builder here. And it works. Every, it's on the right layer and it's here. So what we can do is if we make a... Um, Game object create empty. No, we'll create a 3D. Let's make it a plane that has a mesh collider. But it doesn't have to be, um, I mean, it can be convex. It doesn't really matter. It'll do this uh, wider than kind of mesh, uh, but really all we care about is if we make it a trigger. Oh, it's not set, can't be a trigger. So we may have to make a box because it's kind of a volume thing for a trigger. So game object, create 3D cube. It's gonna have this, we're gonna make it a trigger. We'll make it so that it can collide with the cat. Um, we'll put it in collider. And we're going to call this um, floor trigger. Now we'll scale it to the floor. This will just be the danger zone. So what we may do is make like a safe area that's a certain distance away from the dog that'll be safe to be on the floor so if you're behind the couch and on the floor we'll make it so it's okay but not if you're over here something like that I'm not going to be too precise. And I'm just going to put it right there. We'll turn off the mesh render. So now we have our trigger. Let's give it a little bit more. Because with it being a trigger, you're not it's not going to be a collision. Um, we're not going to it's not going to hold us off the ground. It's just if we're in that it's triggering that if that um, uh, switch so we're going to make it so like this is okay and then that's okay but everything else yeah we'll make that 
So maybe it's like you have to knock a chair off over to get out. But uh, for one thing, we want to make it so that you can't actually jump from here to here and then just jump out because that would be too easy. So we'll figure out some way to uh, make it so that if you try to make this jump, it flips the table over to the point where it's not, you can't get there. Um, so anyway, now we have this trigger. What we want to do is make a timeline where, um, let me think, yeah, so on this trigger we'll add, and I'll put a link to this in the um, script, we'll add a um, script, uh, where did I put it? Not in the 3D game kit. It's not in standard assets. I'm trying to even remember if I have it. It may be in standard assets, but nope. Well, let's see if there is one. We'll do scripts. Yeah, I don't have the script in this. Let me go and copy it. So I've got this script that's called um, Activate Trigger, I believe. Uh, let's go to I think it's in this one. This one, activate trigger playable. Let's actually just copy all of these. Copy and put them in this one, scripts. Don't seem to have, so let's make a folder. Like I said, I'll post a link to the script in the um, description. Now we should have those scripts. Once it's done importing them. Um, right here we want this one drag onto our trigger there. I'm going to drag it over here so that when we collide with this the um, target will be um, the cat GG. And the source <laughs> not even sure if it needs that but what we wanted to do is we want to play or trigger something you can activate you can do all kinds of things um, so there's gonna the nice thing about this is that it can only trigger once instead of a constant activation uh, and then you can set it to repeat if you want um, and you can so you can make it trigger a certain amount and then you can add playable directors to it so it can trigger timelines so let's do um, let's just see if we can make it trigger a timeline and what we'll do is we'll make the dog run so we'll make a game object create empty call this uh, Hit floor timeline. Something descriptive. And then go to your timeline and just drag that in there or create with that selected. Then you're going to call this hit floor 
timeline, timeline, that's fine. And put it in the assets. So there's that. There's our timeline. Now if we take our dog, where is he? Here. Make an animation track. We'll add um, animation from clip. We'll do his run. It'll be Metarig. Run cycle. There he is. What we're going to do is we're going to make it um, so that he animates his, um, we'll add an override track for his position. Like that. Click that and select his position. Just shift it a little bit so it creates a keyframe. And then we'll make it go to like here. We'll see what happens. Maybe make him run. So is it going to be perfect? You're going to need more control. Then we'll make it come to, yeah, we'll make him do that. And then maybe get like to here. And rotate close and we'll make it go to a sitting position there um, stop that and then from here we'll add a animation track animation from clip meta he can sit or he'll scratch his ear let's do that one or sit and then scratch his ear. So it'll be meta. Just gotta find sit down. That'll be that. So he's kind of sitting. And then from that, we can add an idle. Or we'll make him scratch his ear for a second. Let's type in meta to set it down. Um, ear twitch, sit, scratch ear right there. No, idle ear twitch. I think that's the one where he sits. And. Nope. We'll change that to scratch here. That's so he scratches, and that can be. We'll mix that with a little bit of idle. C and paste V. So it's going to be like scratch. Oh, wait, that's sitting. We need to do an idle sit. Uh, we'll change that right there. Scratch, or maybe we do this and then, since he's already sitting. That'll go into the scratch. Does that have a loop? Nope. Oh, uh, you know what? Because that, yeah, so because I'm copying and pasting here, they may, I'm keeping the durations, and that one actually has a longer duration like that. 
So the sit, I may not be giving them enough time to sit. Nope, that was good. And then that, it's okay if it loops, goes into that. So he goes, sits, scratches. Then we're gonna make it so he stands up. Add from animation clip. Meta, sit down, sit up, stand up. And we'll make him walk back to his position where he was. Meta walk cycle. Actually, maybe sniff. Not sure if that one has. Yeah, that one loops. So we'll do a walk before that. So it's going to go um, we need to put in a new record so it's going to hold and it'll be here so start <coughs> excuse me um, starting right here shift his position again and from there to there we'll rotate Too much movement. Zoom in so we get on the keyframe and can shift him back to. So from here we need to make him facing. Give him more rotation and more movements. And a little bit more rotation. And more movement. in the speed and then from there we can get to probably where we go and lay down again it's gonna do a bit of a rotation here Need to make sure that, yeah. Um, so here, do a little bit of a rotation. And then it'll kind of come around do that thing where dogs kind of walk in a circle. Come back to his resting position and then
we can uh, shift it. So we'll stop recording there. He'll sit and lay down. Add from animation clip. And this will be lay down. Probably needs to idle for a second and then lay down. Or sit. We can blend that. And then blend that. Oops. Accidentally set those keys to a track when I dragged it down, so. There we go. And we can add a um, whoa he did a big not sure what he's doing there somehow it's crossed over on the animation so let's zoom in the rotation Him is minus one forty one, then it's going back across, which is why it's uh, this keyframe is zooming. So we need to goes all the way back around to negative eighty five. So this will be minus one forty one. Trying to get it to. That was there. It's getting all this weird keyframing going. Undo, undo. So from here to here, it's good. Um, we can split the track. I think. Stop recording. Could go and edit it in the animation window. Let's look at that. This will give us a little more control. So it's the rotation that we want to take a look at from there, and it's the this key to that one. I'm not sure what he's doing that's causing the rotation because it shouldn't. Uh, negative two eighteen there. It's 218, that's why he's doing it. 218. So now he just walks straight, and then does a huge rotation. Eighteen again. So we do want to do some rotation there. Let's 
just need to set it here. And then on this one, so what were we at here? 165, let's make it 90. Actually, less than 90 is good. Good enough for now. We can polish that up later. And then he returns. And then we want to have him have an idle. Or even just jump back on the camera, then it'd be like a cut back to a camera. Um, so this will be what plays. we'll have a camera following him or even have the cat being chased behind him so it'll be like we can add the cat here so it'll be something like where the cat no matter where you fall it'll show the cat getting chased back here like the standard cut scene just for um, the sake of getting this thing done as a tutorial so we'll add an animation track. Here's our cat. We're gonna put, make sure that's where it starts. Um, so that'll be, where she starts at a keyframe. Give her a jiggle. So she'll be there. Make it so that she rotates. Let's get her a little rotate keyframe. And then she turns around really quick. Why is she not turning around? Oh, she's got the controller. That's the reason. She's got this uh, current third person animator controller. I'm animating the wrong character. So let me remove this. Uh, she's going to be where she was. We'll add another GG from our characters. She's not going to have any kind of character controller on her, so she can be animated completely. You may want to put some sounds like a dog barking and some cat sounds. But let's go ahead and we'll call her um, GG on ground. So we know which one she is. We'll add her to our timeline. Go to our timeline, it, yeah, and then drag her down to it. 
add an animation track, record. Um, so there's her key. I'm going to make her looking at him first. And then as he comes towards her, she's going to go rotate and take off. We'll get her out on her. She's going to go back up. Jump up on top. So in between there, we want to kind of have her go up high. She'll come down there and rotate. While he's doing his thing, she's going to be kind of taunting him. She'll walk around in circles. And then the rest will be her watching him go back. Let's see when he decides. When he gets up, she can jump back maybe. So he's going to get up. She bumps back. He starts walking away. She'll look. She'll kind of shrug and go back to the position that we want her in. As he gets in his position. And assuming she, if she had animation, we'd be making her animate doing this, right? So. And then he's back to normal. So it's like that whole scene is a start cut where she runs, jumps, gets around, then it goes back, gets in them and restarts the game. So we need a camera. So the question is, is what do we want the camera? Something like that. So we'll add a Cinemachine virtual camera. This will be called CVCM Ground Chase Cam. Let's get it in the right position. Let's add a track for it. That needs to target the main camera on the left. And then it'll have this at a uh, Cinemachine shot, which will target our ground chase cam so we can actually see what's going on. 
All right, so now here's where you want to look at it from the game perspective so you can actually see the view. And this is the view from that cam. So now if we take our camera, get it in the right position. So here's the first opening shots. Oh, it's keyed. Why would it be keyed? Initial rotation offset. This may result in misrepresentation of all their angles when recording a transform properties are recommended to reset rotation prior to recording. I'm not really recording on this. just get the kind of position right let's make sure we get the kind of width of our screen so this will be the composition so far just gonna chase the cat she runs and jumps up Um, thinking maybe the camera can rotate a little bit. Like that. Then from here we'll cut to another cam. So we'll have another camera. It's in a machine. Create a virtual camera. We'll call this ground chase cam two. And drag that, or add a uh, shot, which will be that camera. Then we'll just do a little transition between them. But make sure you're out here on the camera in order to set it up. Hit W, select it, bring it up into the shots. And then rotate it. I just want to get a so I'm trying to figure out the shot here. Maybe that. Let's go. So it's like transition. Then he starts to leave, and we can keep this camera and just make it follow him back. So we're going to add an animation to it with an override track. Or actually, we may do a cut when he gets to leave. We'll come back to sort of where we want our um, shot to be. 
add another cam, send machine, create a virtual cam, put it up. I'll add it here. Give it a name. Ground cam three. Make it cut and its position, what it's looking at. Go down and select it to get it looking back sort of where our start was. So it goes, he walks, the cat goes back, sit and resets. But maybe we want to have it a little bit higher. And then rotate it down a little. <laughs> so there's a cut, or we can transition. Let's do a try a transition. It can work. All right, so three cameras. There's our chase. Everything gets reset. All right, that should work. So there's our um, kind of our hit the ground trigger cutscene. We're going to make it so that the timeline for that is not play on wake. And then our floor trigger will... Oh, one thing we need to do on our... Let me go back to the timeline. Um, we do want it to have turn off our... Uh, turn off and reposition our uh, cat character. So... Let's set um, not GG on ground, but GG. The deactivate. Let's add an activation track. And that will be for her. So we can see where she's activated. You just want to check this with the... Okay, that's the wrong one. That's the one we want to activate, but we also want to... And you can pull down from these two, so you can go instead of that. You can put the GG there on that one. So that when that's... Oh wait, that was GG on ground. This one. There. Now the third person's deactivated. And we can add another one and put GG on there, GG on ground. So this one is deactivated and we'll get activated right at the end. when this gets de deactivated. Okay. That should work. All right, 
So this will be, now the trick would be that our dog, um, we may want to shift all this out a little bit and move, uh, we can't do it with our tracks here though. Um, we want to make sure that this position for our dog is there when this thing isn't playing. So, um, let's turn off our timeline. Play on wake, I mean. So we'll trigger that when we hit the ground. Now this floor trigger then, its script should be play and it'll be the playable directors. You just make that equal one and hit enter and then you can target that hit floor timeline. Um, so the target would be, I think this cube, we'll just drag them over the floor trigger or the source will be the floor trigger and GG will be the target hitting it. Let's see. So if we hit play it's auto playing. Cuts back. When we activate and now we're back into gameplay mode. Okay. Um, so what we want though is for that to be active at the beginning. So why is it not? It's, let me think. Um, the floor trigger. It's not play on wake. And truthfully, we want that deactivated. Try hold on that. Just trying to figure out how to get our initial start state. So it's going to play that. And that's because it's active and it's an active timeline. Although it shouldn't play that with game on play on wake. So we'll turn that off. Let's just see if that helps with our. We don't have our. Yeah, he's set up. He's set up. There's the cat. So we just need a start state a uh, timeline start state. So we add another timeline. Create empty. This will be our start timeline. We'll make a... I have to turn off the lock on this. Create a new timeline. Start timeline. Timeline is fine. Put it in. Assets. And we just need an activation track. So it would be activation track for that start time, the um, hit floor timeline. I think. Make it short. And we don't want this character activated on start because she's not. And we do want this one. So then our start timeline should just play on wake. Yep. Wrap mode. 
hold. Let's see. So now we're in gameplay mode. If we hit the trigger, which isn't triggering, it should. Let's do no loop. Everything's in position. I just need to get that trigger working now. So the floor trigger, it's active. Box collider, GG. It's possible that targets could be off. So let's do floor trigger is the target. And GG is the source. Trigger count one, playable director, hit four timeline, and we're playing. That timeline needs to. Okay, so yeah, it needs to be active. Let's see if it gets overrode because the other one is set to play on wake. Nope, for some reason that one takes control. All right, so we probably wanna activate too. So we can add hit floor timeline and play on that trigger. So we'll do start timeline, that's going to play everything. And then on our floor trigger here, we need to activate and that'll just be don't know if we need the playable director if we're just activating we can make it so that this will be play on wake then. But since it's not activated, it won't play at the start. Take our trigger, make it activate. Then hit floor timeline. Try that. So was it turned on? Right. Trigger. Oh yeah, it's gonna be. That's part of the problem. Is the trigger is in a collider and it's already being triggered by other things. So it needs to be in a collision object that can only be triggered by the player. Other things are colliding with that trigger already. All these other objects and colliders can be triggered by that. So you want something that can only be triggered by the player. Maybe there's a trigger. We can add a layer that's trigger. Let's do that. Add layer right here at 12, we'll call trigger. And then the only thing that can collide with those would be a player. So if we go and set that trigger. And then edit project settings. The player can collide with. Just going to find them. Colliders can't, cameras can't, triggers can't. We just want it so that the player define there it is. The player can trigger a trigger, and that's the only thing. Triggers won't work with anything else. Alright, let's try that. Cat set to player, I think. 
Got set to player. Is there anything else in the scene set to player? That's defaults. Hmm. Because basically, this is deactivated. We can maybe make another switch that will play if it's deactivated and we activate. There's our gameplay mode. Now the trick is he's colliding, but we don't have it having a play. So let's try to make our trigger. Then we can copy this and paste. And instead of activate, hit play. One. So that triggered reset. And then we play through, goes back, gets into position, and then where do we end up? So we may have to reset our. So now we're on the floor, right? So. And we need to set it so it can re trigger. So at the end of the timeline. Um, So floor trigger or hit floor timeline should not be hold, it should be none. We'll see if it starts it again when we do it because we don't want it to loop. Collision, restart. And then he goes back. She'll be on the floor though, because we're going to have to reset her position. You're kind of an invisible mode. Now she's colliding, so we need to. Make it so that this trigger can repeat, I believe. Because it's only done it once and once it's triggered, it won't do it again, so. Repeat, repeat. So by deactivating her, it'll play, and then when she reactivates, it should trigger it again. Because she's on the ground, unless we put her back on the sofa or the ottoman. Yeah, so by being on the ground, it won't trigger because she's already in collision mode, but when she jumps, then it triggers it again. So now we want to take her position at the uh, end of floor timeline and set, let's copy her position here, and it's basically these numbers, 1.02, 1.06 and then 2.261, negative 2.261. At the end of that floor timeline, we will take her when this activation is there. GG on grounds. No, this one. Sorry. lockets she'll be add
could reload the scene if we wanted. Uh, that's one way to do it, but, um, well, then it resets all the locations, uh, all of the objects and stuff. So it's kind of like a puzzle that you have to resolve from the beginning each time at a set location track, I think. For GG Transform is the way we want to do it. And add set location clip. Put it right here. And the position will be her position, which would be 102, 106, negative 261. One oh two, one oh six, and negative two point six one. I don't know what her rotation was. Negative one seventy six. Point seven one seventy seven point seventy seven six that should reposition her. Let's just double check. Turn her on. Yep, there she is. Okay, so we'll turn her off. We'll see if that works. Oh, she's off. Sorry. One her on. And this track. Yep. Why is it deactivated? Uh, I guess because she's deactivated, I could just reset the position as soon as she gets there. And that should hold. Let's see. Maybe the same as an activation track. She's not active. Just need to remember or see why. So she's. Is it because I turned that back on? Play on wake? Nope. Let me get rid of this just for a sec to see. Something about the set location may actually... Why is she invisible now? Something about the four timeline. not playing because it's uh, off goes back and then resets let me just see if I can get to play again it's animations <laughs> So 
and then we do turn that off turn this off get to play something about because she's turned off there now there's that that activates And she'll be on the ground when this is done. And I want to check the timeline. Add. Actually, do it when she's active here. I don't know if that's a bug or um, so she's active or she should be. That's the issues. If I go here when I add that, because this isn't set, it's not play on wake. So now she's active. Looking up here, you can see drag her. Actually, don't drag her. Uh, do the timeline. Add set location track for her transform. And then we need to add that. At the end. So we'll set her location. And we can set what that was. It was negative 177. Six and then position one point two six one point two six not sure negative two I'm just trying to get her in the right position roughly um, One point oh six negative two point two six one. Okay, so in that track And it'll just drop her from there. That's fine. So that should work. Now, go back, reset. That was tricky. Take our timeline, turn it off, turn that off, and turn. We can go back here now. Or if we hit play, let's see what happens. So now we've got our game mode activate so now this should reset her position back on top of the ottoman so that when he gets back into position she's in position yep all right so everything's back to normal so if we go and mess the room up oh, we restarted it so it's not too annoying if she's in a different position it'll just reset that animation and it drops her back into the right position um, and the trick will be how do you get you want to make sure you can launch to the uh, and stay off of the ground so what I'm trying to do here is basically uh, reset things so now remember I said so that I didn't have that trigger over here but if I go and I walk that activates but the couch is turned over now so if we did it right we should be when he goes back to normal 
And you may want to make multiple animations to uh, create. So now we're back in gameplay mode. The couch is in its right position. Oh, I just activated it again. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, we could, uh, in this initial start track, we could add a cutscene. Uh, because we're just having this hit floor timeline activate track here uh, in order to set it up uh, we could have like a camera cut uh, where we create uh, an initial start condition so we may want to let's actually add that real quick um, we'll add a new cutscene camera a virtual camera. This one will be called CM Start Cut. And we'll have um, in our start timeline, well, that start cut will get its position. Let's just do our timeline here. We'll lock it since we're going to do some animation. Um, this will be at the very end. Let's set our cut time to seconds. We're going to add a um, cinema machine track, target our main camera, add a cut cinema machine shots, and that'll be our start cut. Now we just need to get that camera in position wherever we want it. So what I'm thinking is, is that we'll start by looking at the um, TV. But instead of targeting the TV with a target, we can make and animate a target that will pan this camera so that we're going to start at the TV and pan around the room. So let's make a component or a game object to create an empty. We'll call this cut scene cam target and drop that into add an animation track we're going to put that over around the TV at first we'll make our camera look at it Once we can find it there. So now you can see where we can start to use that to sort of set up some composition. So we're just going to add it, uh, have our cutscene cam target. We can move that and that'll change the position. So maybe we start here. Uh, let's go ahead and record position. Just do a shift to get that initial keyframe. And then over three or four seconds we can pan to see the cat like that so there's our shot our move we might add like something instead of just doing like a linear look where it's traveling we might do an arc so it's gonna go pan and then come around like that. Now where we want that cat to be, let me zoom in and make sure I'm on that key, yeah. Is we don't want him to be in the center screen. We may want him to be like to the left, right there. Keep him in a good composition and maybe make this down low. Could even be to there like that. So that's a nice uh, line. So uh, stop the recording at that point. Now we can add another camera, which will be the cat cam. Um, just looking at it, kind of like paying attention to whatever he's doing, maybe a close up. So we'll add a new camera. This we can move. 
And again, we'll target, maybe this one also targets the cutscene cam target. No, it's up too high. We'll make another target for this one. Uh, actually, let's just let it target the cats. GG. Mm, it's too low. We will add another target. It's always good to have something you can control. So we'll create empty. We'll call this. Uh, we could have done GG target, I suppose, but we'll do cut GG target and just put it wherever for now we're going to make it right at her face and we'll shift its position once we figure out we have a camera to see it with this will be targeting cut gg targets there we go now with that target we have some more control about the composition of where she's at in the scene so something like yeah maybe that i like that because i have an idea for where to put it so now we'll take that camera and just add a um track i'm going to do a little bit of a transition so it's going to do crossfade and then come to that, hold, and we'll add another camera that will be behind her. I'm not even naming them anymore, but you get the general idea. And we can make that look at the same target. Um, and drag it into, just get there so we can see what it looks like. Now for this one, we can use the camera. Instead of moving the target, we'll move the camera to get it lined up so that we get the shot maybe the way we want it. So what we'll do is, um, Here, the target's here, so we're going to animate it again. And that's fine because we're going to do a transition across. Oh, wait, did I animate? No, that was the GG target. I need to animate that because the target hasn't moved yet, so never mind. Um, so what we can do is we can add another target here, the GG target, animation track, record. We're just going to shift it a little bit there to make the first keyframe. And then from there to there, we will shift it. So now that we're on our other camera, we can shift it to get the composition that we want and shift the camera down. That'll be good. We can do a little transition there where we go as the thing plays. So we're in this mode and then it's there. So let's just get our camera in position where we want it. To get the composition that we want and we can still, there we go. All right. Now, that can be our opening cutscene, although we can add another camera that'll be from the dog's perspective to kind of set up that adversarial kind of um, shot. So the machine, create virtual camera, and this will be the cam 3, put it in our shot. I'm going to make it target that same GG target.
then when we get there, I should show it here. The camera's in the wrong position under the ground. I'm going to move it, bring it up above, and put it behind the dog. Get it lower to the ground and figure out the shots. Hmm. I think it's better to have them over here. We can shift the table stuff. So that'll be there to the cuts. The dog will be doing its thing. Maybe we can do a little bit of an animation on the target here since it's looking at it. Just do a little move and then do a slight shifting. Let's just figure out. Yeah, like that. So that means then we go here. So there's a little bit of a pan there. So I want to see where this camera can be. In terms of the best composition. To keep her in the shot. I don't want to move him now since I know he's animated from his spot, but I can move the tables. So that shot will cut at the end of this. We can move the tables to shift things a little bit. Just selected. free up the shot a little bit and then we can move the camera a little bit more to get him over on the side. Something like that. Oh, and then our targets. Make sure we're on it. We can shift too far to the right now, so we want to go like that. Let's look at that. Yeah. Might start a little bit too far now. So we can move our camera that way. There we go. So now that's our start cutscene. Let's check that out. We'll save. See how it plays. So here's our start. Now we're in gameplay mode, and if we hit the ground, it comes running towards us, resets, goes back, and then we'll be back on top of the ottoman, and we're back in gameplay mode. So you've got a start cutscene that does some initial storytelling, and then the cutscene of the dog kind of doing the chase. Now for you, the goal would be to figure out the platforming using the same concepts of this uh, physics-based um, sandbox so that everything, and make it so that it's a challenge for the cat. They can't necessarily go straight out the door. They can interact with these objects and find their way around to the point where they can then suddenly get out the door by jumping over the dog and get to safety that way. 
So that's pretty much everything you should need to know. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment. I'll put links to the scripts and links to the uh, models that I've used in the description. Uh, thanks for watching.